What's up, Wisconsin? Welcome back to the Inside Wisconsin Show here on YouTube and wherever you listen to podcasts. Trevor Thomas, John Anderson, Jay. Hey, I didn't yes. expect you to wear it. I knew you weren't going to wear the first soccer jersey on the show, but here's oh. mine. The kicking. You know why, right? We got. I got to show you this. I promised JJ no. Watt I would do this. Look, you're a good man. Yep, I promised. I said to him. He saw it on Twitter. We will get him on the show someday, JJ. But yeah, he's all this right. is Burnley, man. He's all in on the Burnley. That's a soccer team. It's the kicking. Yeah, I know. You're not a no, big I'm just saying it's fan. a soccer team. Where 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 is that where's that located? Where is that? In England. It's part of the, the English soccer league. And I don't know anything about it. I'm just a big JJ Clearly, Watt guy. It's the English Premier League and they have several divisions and all that other stuff. They just got bumped up. What do they call that when they get bumped up? They promoted. They just got promoted back to the Premier League. So, anyway, Bur- listen, Wisconsin's all in on Burnley. you got to know that for sure, right? Like, the, the, J.J. Watt bought in on this Burnley soccer team, and Wisconsin, we're Burnley fans now. Anyway, how are you? Well, I'd be better if we didn't have to talk about soccer this much. <laughs> we're done. All right, we're done. <laughs> Let's talk basketball with Frank Kaminsky on the show today. And you work with his oh. wife or going to be wife. He's not married yet, I don't think. The, the lovely and talented Ashley Brewer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which, by the way, came out of nowhere, uh, you know, because so she's she's just, uh, she's a, a, a gorgeous one uh, young woman and her, his name's been attached to some other you know people. But um, she's settled down. She found Frank. Good for her. Who could be a better choice than a guy who's, you know, good, solid Midwestern guy Perfect. and uh, and a badger. And listen. The guy is seven foot one of fun, man. I'm I'm all in on this cat. He, <laughs> fun. He gave us he gave he and that team those teams gave us a hell of a ride for a couple of seasons. Um, you know, it's still a little, uh, it's still kind of painful to talk about, mm-hmm. as you know. You know, when they lost that championship game to Duke, the guy who changed the whole complexion of it was Grayson Allen, and now he plays for the Bucks, and so I, I still. I'll be honest. I love the book. I can't fully embrace Grace and Allen yet. I can't, but I, I can put my arms around Frank, the tank, baby. Oh yeah, man. He was fantastic. Let's go to him. Frank Kaminsky on the inside Wisconsin show. The inside Wisconsin show is brought to you by American family insurance, Aaron's company, Lane's farm and fleet, capital credit union, festival foods, quick trip, Miller light, North star Mohican casino resort, Provea health, and the University of Wisconsin Platteville. Hey, remember to subscribe on YouTube, leave a review, smash the like button, just get with us. JA, I ask all of our guests if there's a way that you want to be introduced. Sure. And Frank Kaminsky said, How about the best looking person to ever graduate from the University of Wisconsin Madison? That's Frank Kaminsky. We know him better for basketball, but damn good looks, Frank. Look at you. Yeah. 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 That, I appreciate man. you. You didn't really co sign it, but. <laughs> You just kind of said that I said that. I was hoping that you would say most handsome man without saying that I told you to say that. But No, no, sorry. Busted. Listen, (laughs) who amongst us is here to argue any of this, right? It's all in the eye of the beholder. Exactly. But, again, a lot of people are lucky I went to Mizzou. Otherwise, I might have that title if, indeed, I had ended up at – I'm trying to think where it was. Is it Og Hall? Does that sound right? I think I was supposed to live in Og Hall. Og, yes. Yeah. There's Og, Og, there was Celery. I lived in Smith. There's a bunch of different buildings now. Can't keep track of them anymore. Wait, as a big time basketball star, are you still living in the dorm? Well, freshman year, you freshman year you had to. It was, you didn't get a choice. Uh, freshman year, you had to live on campus with a roommate that was also on the team. And then uh, summer after freshman year, you were allowed to move off campus. Okay. Uh, who, who'd your room with? And by the way, did you get an, a, a long bed? Were you able to make some sort of adjustment there? <laughs> uh, I roomed with uh, Trayvon Jackson. Okay. Uh, freshman year. I did not. I just got the regular twin bed. I ended up a couple months in, I ended up getting a full size futon and sleeping on that. Um, <laughs> but it was bad. Like the first couple months sleeping were just, it was brutal. And, and I sleep, like I sleep a ton and right. I just like could not sleep at all on those beds. The mattresses were horrible. Beds were just small. By the time I moved in, the first thing I did when I moved into my apartment I, I was tiny little room, apartment room, as you can imagine on a college campus, but I bought a king size bed and it took up like basically the whole room. I had a king size bed and a dresser and that's it. Couldn't fit anything else in there. 
Oh, that is true. We didn't even get what we should have asked Butch that because that could have Brian Butch has got to be the oh, same. Yeah. Problem. He had to have the same problem yeah. as you guys. Here. It's, yeah, it's, I'm, it's I'm six foot eight, so I'm not quite like seven feet. I mean, right. That's a totally that's yeah. four inches taller, but six eights. No, no walk in the park either from wow. a bench perspective. Anyway, yeah, this is this explains a lot of questions. How is it? you come in? You're highly recruited and you average your freshman year. You average like a point and a half a game. Well, of course. I can't sleep at night. Who can function <laughs> under those kind of circumstances? Yeah. Uh, but listen, you're an Illinois guy, and now you're uh-huh. a traveled NBA, NBA guy, but you're four years in Madison. Do you feel like that's enough to qualify you as a full-on Wisconsin people? Because we kind of need – every once in a while we test people's bona fides on the show. It's it's funny. It's Obviously, I grew up in Chicago, went my whole life there. Uh, go back to – Wisconsin or go to Wisconsin four years and then um, nowadays everyone just assumes I'm from Wisconsin. Perfect, Excellent. perfect. I think everyone, we'll just everyone, go with everyone, that. Everyone, everyone just goes. They, they come up to me and they go. Uh, so do you go like go back? Uh, well, how's Wisconsin? Do you go back like do you go back home to Wisconsin in the summers? And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not from there. Uh, <laughs> I feel but- like though. Trev, don't you feel like a couple of Final Fours gives you carte blanche to be? Yeah. Right? Like, that gets you – that's your member's card easy. Yeah. I think so. I mean, I claim, I claim Wisconsin. Like, that's – it's obviously very near and dear to me. But, like, I'm from Chicago. Like, my family's been in Chicago forever. Like, that's just – that's home. That's where I'm from. But, um, you know, I haven't been back in Chicago in a while either. But, um, you know, I claim Wisconsin. It's, like, kind of my second home. It's like uh, – it's like – Illinois kind of raised a boy and then Wisconsin turned me into a man. That's the best way I'll say it. Yeah. yeah. And I get that. I was going to say, you definitely have a house in Door County, though. Let's be real. Everybody from Chicago has a I place did. in Door I County. I wish I did. I thought, I, they had, you know. I thought you guys all had your houses in Lake Geneva. Lake Geneva, Door County. Um, my family is actually on a small lake in Michigan, but we can keep that, <laughs> keep that a secret. Okay. That's all right. But then at college, I always kind of say that I grew up in Wisconsin and then I kind of matured at where we end up going to college. And, yeah. and, and I say that and I think, my God, I look at some of the things I did in college and I'm like, matured is probably a generous way to describe. <laughs> it was a slow, it was a slow, uh, slow matur- maturation process for me, but I did it eventually. These things can't be rushed. By the way, so you're you say Chicago. I, I went to school with a bunch of people too. Give me the where like what are the limits of I'm from Chicago? Can I go as far as Lake Forest, Naperville, yeah. maybe, but Aurora is Aurora Chicago still? Like give me uh, the what fits. So I'm from close to Naperville. Like that's where I went to high school. That's where my high school is. My family, my dad's side of the family is from the south side of Chicago where the White Sox play. So we're massive White Sox fans. Um so I spent a ton of time in Chicago itself growing up, you know, I went to like mm-hmm. 16 or 16 or 17 straight, like White Sox home openers. Like that's really where my family's like quote unquote from. Um, when my parents got married after my older sister was born, they moved out to the suburbs. So I would say you can probably go as far North as Lake forest and then West, maybe not all the way to Naperville, but it's just easy. Like when I got to college, I would tell people I'm from Lyle, Illinois, which is like my hometown. And they'd be like, well, where's that? That's got to be in like super South Illinois. And I'm like, <laughs> I just, it just got to the point where it just became easier to just say Chicago. Yes. Yeah, good. Chicago. Yeah. Well, look at, well, look at Owen Miller's. He insists he's from Fredonia, right? We've <laughs> yep. in Wisconsin. So Born in Mequon. I get mad at people who all say, oh, I'm from Green Bay. And I'm like, are you or are you from Ashwaubenon or De Pere? Sure. Like, I'm ve- I'm a stickler for that since I'm in the city. Like, Trev right now will tell you, where are you? He's in De Pere. Yeah. Or he'll tell you he's in Green Bay, but he's in De Pere. Yeah, Don't well, let him I remember. Lie. I remember the first time someone came up to me in, Cal- uh, in college and was like, I'm from DeForest. And I was like, I'm from De City. Where, like, <laughs> they kept going, I'm from DeForest. And I was like, I'm from De City. Like, <laughs> I, like I didn't know DeForest. Like, I thought it was like a joke. That like they say I'm from DeForest in Wisconsin. I legitimately, I swear to God, <laughs> this is D Peer, D E space Peer, P E R E. I've got I got used to them like Economowoc, Ashwaubenon, like all yeah. the places. Yeah, like, yeah. Some people are from the farm. You know, the farm, they're yeah, there you go. the farm. <laughs> the north all right we're six minutes into the inside yeah. wisconsin show and all we talked about is freaking illinois can we come back to madison here for a second uh, yes. let's let's talk a little bit about your time in the red 
And specifically, I saw a video today that said you had a homecoming when they retired your jersey. So Madison is indeed part of your home, too. What was that like being in Madison and seeing your jersey go up in the rafters, Frank? I mean, it was extremely special from the standpoint that everybody came back for it. Um, And that's really, you know, I never expected to, like, get my jersey hung in the rafters or anything like that. I just I wanted that to symbolize um, when I first talked to Barry Alves, like he called me and said, like, this is what we want to do. I just like stressed to him that I wanted to make sure it was like everybody was there. It was a time where we could all be there to do it because it just symbolized like so much of like what our group and our team had like accomplished. And I understand like it was my name and my jersey and my number, you know, going in the rafters. But like I wanted to make sure that everyone was out on the court, um, all the teammates, all the coaches, you know, all the the staff members, everybody that was still there. I just wanted to be like a celebration almost of everything like we achieved. And, and that's what we did. Like, I think I think only a couple teammates who were playing overseas at the time couldn't make it. Um, Outside of that, pretty much everyone was there, and it was just extremely special to have, like, my family, all my friends, all my teammates. And I think we ended up getting, like, three suites in the arena just filled with people, like, family members and everything. And it was just – it was really cool. You know, and I wish – and I do wish, like, I had more time than I do do to go back to Madison more often. Um, But, you know, when you do go back and it's for special occasions, like we've been back, um, you know, it just makes the time there that much more special. So the thing about getting your reti- your jersey retired, and I think of people who uh, like have buildings named after, like feel like that's an old man's game, right? Like, and you're young. Did you sit there and go, wait, I, I, that's a great honor, but I'm like, let me get to be 30 first. You know, like it seemed like that was really quick. And I did, I did. I talked to my, like, when I got that call, I talked to my dad about it. And um, I was like, I feel like my story like hasn't finished yet. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, like what we did for the school in the basketball program and all of that, um, I thought it would be at the end of the day, obviously I said, I wasn't going to turn it down and say, no, I don't think I'm ready to have my you know, number <laughs> retired and everything. But like, while it was still close and it was still fresh, like I said, it was a nice celebration from the school for like all of us. And, you know, I know there will be some more stuff in the future, um, you know, with just with our teams and what we accomplish and getting everyone back to campus. But that's kind of the thing. You graduate and you scatter out into the world like we had five, six guys from that team, you know, playing professionally or playing overseas. It became difficult to get everyone like back together. And that's two years removed. So it was nice to have something in the meantime where it was like it was still close there's still only a few years prior, but like literally, like I said, we could get like the parents, the teams, the everybody back on campus, you know, while we're still young and while we're still not like living lives elsewhere. It was, it was, it's nice. Like to, it's nice to be young and still celebrating a lot of stuff. Yeah. Could, could the dudes that have shown up, could you gotten five together and taken on the current, the current oh, for sure. group you'd have taken them down? For sure. We don't buy, tw- we don't buy 20. <laughs> wow. Shots fired. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being honest with you. Like, we went to back, we played in the national championship game like two years before, and everyone was still in shape. Like, Sam and I were still in the NBA. <laughs> Nigel, Nigel was getting, Nigel was in his first year professionally. Um, you know, I would have had to guard Ethan, which you know, would have been a good matchup, but he took all my moves. So I knew what he was going to do. I taught, I taught him everything. <laughs> Is awesome. there an appreciation? Even though, it, listen, it's still fresh. You're not that far away. It, but is there is, is is there an appreciation that goes by after every year about just how difficult that is? You see good teams go through the tournament and they don't make it. Like, is is there a fresh every year appreciation for the accomplishment? Not once, but to do it twice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when you do it the first time, like especially us, like we didn't have many expectations going into that season. Um, like we weren't picked to finish well in the Big Ten. We weren't ranked. We didn't have like the hoopla. We had graduated like a bunch of good players. And then like guys like me were coming in and being first time starters. And I can remember people like saying I was a big question mark and, um, you know, all this stuff, like just things we had to achieve going into the season. And then you make this like kind of magical run all the way to the final four. You beat a lot of really good teams and you get there and you come up so close, like losing on a butter, a buzzer beater in the final four. 
and I say this, and, and Sam used to say this too, is like, if we were going to win the national championship, you know, our, our first year in the final four probably would have been easier had we gotten to the national championship game. Um, and, you know, to, to, for me and Sam, you know, after that, to make the decision to go back to school and then we come back to school with like a target on our back every single night we play, especially in the Big Ten and then getting into the tournament, it was, it was extremely difficult to get back there. Like, I don't think people realize, like, sometimes you're, like, dumb enough, you don't, you don't, like, understand the run you're on. And then the second time you get back to campus, there's a lot more pressure because you're, like, like, we know what it takes to get back there. And, like, we weren't thinking about it the first time, but now we're thinking about it the second time. And, you know, I remember we had some close calls in the tournament our senior year. Like, we played a lot of close games in that tournament. It's not like we just ran through our competition. Uh, because people wanted to beat us like they knew that we were coming back we were a one seed um, you know I was you know national player of the year like we had NBA guys on our team we had a lot of really good players like people wanted to beat us you can tell and I think the first year some people kind of took us for granted um, so it was it was really difficult to get back there the second time and then obviously you know the run we had to play playing all the good you know similar teams from the year before having to play I mean, look at that Kentucky team having to play them in the semifinals to get to play another team at Duke that was just loaded as well. Um, you know, obviously you would have loved to have walked away and one of the two of them with a the national championship, but like our road and the things we had to do and the things like we had to build from the inside to get there. It's not like we just slapped talent together and like became a final four contender. Like we really had to like, get together and guys had to accept their roles and guys had to play, you know, great basketball for a consistent period of time to get there. And I think that's the special part about it that people don't necessarily understand. Like we kind of came out of nowhere the first year. And then the second year we were, we were top dogs pretty much like all season and people were gunning for us night in and night out. And, you know, when you're, when you have that target, like I said, it's just, it's that much more difficult to get back there. And we did it. And it was Friggin' awesome. I can tell you right now, I do not take it for granted that you went. I was in Las Vegas when you beat Arizona to get to the Final Four. I had, uh, I had, not, I didn't need any more reasons to party harder, Frank, but appreciate your assist that in is, that category. That is the one thing I do wish of the two. Like, when we got to the Final Four, both times we were in L.A., and it was, it was hard. Like, you see all the videos of everyone on campus, like, just going crazy, and it's like we had – we didn't get back to school till like two, three days later. So it was like the, the kind of the big hoopla and everything kind of winded down. And that was the thing about our team. Like we loved like just showing up to those things and just like seeing it. Like our, our scene in the hotel in the final four when we beat Kentucky, like you'll see, you remember like the videos, the guys on our team just had their phones out, like filming everything. It was, it was, those are some special memories, man. We didn't take like anything like for granted. Like we tried to go to everything. We showed up to all the cool events. We didn't turn anything down. And you just like, you create all those special memories. And that's, that's like the aspect of things I remember so much is just, you know, all the people that we kind of affected and touched, like people who graduated or went to school at the time, like talk about how that was like their best memories. And that's, that's something that's special. Like even now, like eight, nine years later, like you still run into people on the side of the street. Like I went to, I went to school with you or I went to Madison at the time you were there. And it's like, it was the most special thing. Like I still, I still talk to everyone about it all the time. And that's, that's really, really cool. That so is that's, cool. That second one, right. We're in Indy. Is that right? Cause I was there. Yep. Um, and I remember when we, when you guys beat Kentucky, uh, I was on set, Trev, I think I told you this. Oh, where, this is a uh, great story. We're, 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 we're in a commercial break I'm doing with Steve Levy, and we decide to play the jump around when we came back, which made people go cuckoo, even though you can't use you know commercial music, so it probably cost the station a fortune. <laughs> what I remember most about the then Monday night was, like, obviously the Badgers, when the town was going to explode. Yeah. I don't know where the Duke people were. That whole town, you could have, the, the whole town was just like, all right, I guess we'll all go to bed. It was just a bunch of guys in khakis and, and Duke polo shirts, and they had done it. And I'm like, I've, I've been to a ton of Final Fours. It's the first one where I've ever went, like, is no one going to at least just act like somebody won the game? Like, they were just – matter of fact, that yeah, the, the yeah. bars and the restaurants had to just be absolutely crushed because the Duke people, you know, God, God love you. I got it. You won the tournament. But they, they just – I mean, 
they were the dullest group of people I've ever seen in my life. I mean, you even looked around the stadium in that final four. It was all red. Like it was like, you could look around, like you see the seats in the football stadium, like, you know, whose section is which, and you could just see like the whole three quarters of that stadium was red. And that was, we traveled well and we, we had a lot of support. There's something that, cool though. You, you talk cool. about how hard it is, but there's something cool also about knowing you're really good. Right. And then you go in and you're like, yep. we're going to plow these guys because we can. Yeah. And that was, and that's, that's something like, had I gone back and been able to give myself one piece of advice, it would have been after we beat Kentucky, just go to your, just, just move on to the next game. And as hard as, is like, as easy as that sounds, not saying like we didn't compete against Duke and we didn't have like our chances to win the game. I just think that the mindset for me specifically, I don't know about anyone else going into beat Kentucky. Like I felt we had like, kind of beat Duke. You know what I mean? Like you beat the best team. I almost wish that that game would have been like the national championship game, just mentality wise. And it's not Mm -hmm. like, it's not like I don't, um, I wasn't like competitive. Obviously I feel like I played really well in the national championship game too, but um, I just think as a whole, like when push came to shove in the Duke game, we kind of got shoved more than we did the pusher. I, I, I can't stand Grayson Allen. I'm sitting over here like just thinking about that game. And I'm, I think we're going to go to break because I probably got to take, I Already? have to take a break. This sucks. No, no. You, fine, it's because you need a tissue. Admit it. You yeah. Just need a I'm pissed. You need a tissue. He it's played okay. in it. He played in it. I can only imagine how pissed off he is. I'm over here as a yeah. fan. I, I still to this day, luckily, have never watched Duke celebrate that. I turned around and walked out of the bar I was in. I was like, nope, I'm not watching this. I don't want that memory banked in here. All right, let's go to more positive things, shall we? Um, Talk to us about being the big man on campus. You just talked about being really good and, you know, all the joy you brought to everybody. But, Frank, you and I don't blend in well, man. Like, you're (laughs) 7'1". I mean, so not only are you phenomenal at the basketball and all that, but everybody picks you out of a crowd. What was that like? It was, I mean, at first I really struggled with, like, all the attention. Um, You know, obviously – first couple years when I was just on the team, like you get small attention here and there, like people recognize you. But then, you know, once everything kind of started happening for me, um, I kind of, I don't want to say I like went into like, uh, went into like hiding, but like, you know, the first, I was definitely uncomfortable in the beginning, but then it's just like, it just kind of dawned on me. Like I only get a finite amount of time on campus. Like I'm going to enjoy myself. Like I'm not going to like stop going to places. I'm, I'm not going to, stop hanging out with people. I'm not going to pass up going to Wando's or at the time brats and uh, college club. Like I'm not going to pass up going to those things. Like I'm going to do what I want to do and just enjoy this as much as I can. And you know, it was, sometimes it was a lot, like, especially with all, you know, once I was on the cover of sports illustrated, like all the people that would wait to get those like signed and stuff and like kind of follow you around campus and not leave you alone. Like that, that side of everything kind of got to be annoying, but um, you know, it was nice. Like, that's the thing about Wisconsin. Like the people are so nice there and it's so great. Like everyone just like, when they see you out having like a good time and enjoying yourself with people, like they don't bother you much. And that's what I always appreciate, appreciated. Like when I was out with my teammates, friends visiting, you know, p- friends on campus, like we would go do something like go to the terrace, um, go to the student unions, go, you know, golfing, bowling, whatever it was like, we were always doing something. And they just kind of left us alone to just like be, they'd be like, come on, like come up and say like, Hey, we're really big fans. Like keep going. And then the, that was, that was kind of like the end of it. And that, and that part was really cool. Like everyone on campus, like they saw us out doing our thing and kind of just let us be college kids. Yeah. that's cool. But there is something to be said for, um, cause if you're seven, one and you score 40, people know who you are. And if you go two for 20, they still know who you are. Where if you're Jack, your boy, Jackson, like you just go to because you're you just you blend in with the crowd at that point, right? Even if he yeah. scores forty or goes two for twenty, he's 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 still a normal sized dude for the most part, and he just goes sit down at Chili's yeah. and nobody's gonna nobody <laughs> nobody knows who the dude is, right? When it comes, I'm to a him. little bit I'm a little bit different. I'm I'm a full yeah. I'm a full head above everyone. So yeah. I used to sit. So I used to go somewhere and sit as opposed <laughs> to stand. Like you go to the one of those bars on campus and you just sit down at a table. Uh, yeah, That's yeah. Right. 
That's all right. one, like my, what was nice about my last year in college is that, you know, with all the summer courses and anything, I really didn't have very many classes to take. So like I had a lot of free days to just like really do nothing. Like my second semester, I only had class like one day a week because I was trying to spread everything out. So I didn't graduate too early or didn't have to like start a master's program or something like that, hmm. which was nice. I had a lot of free time. Yeah. Listen, Matt, Matt Leinert famously had uh, ballroom dancing his last year when he was at USC. I took, I took, so, I took some gems. <laughs> literally i like, took a gem i took a gems class like a gemstones <laughs> uh, i took bird watching which was honestly really hard like that class i thought i walked into it thinking it was gonna be super easy that class it sucked it was so hard i was so <laughs> mad but i wondered i was like it's bird watching like how hard can it really be but no like you have to be able to identify all these different species of birds and their family and their kingdom and their ordata or whatever it is yeah yeah it's order I was like, this is kingdom phylum class, the whole thing. But then like other that once I picked my major and it was a lot of writing and, um, you know, papers and stuff like that, like that, that was easy for me. So it wasn't like my major was pretty easy. I'll just go with that. At that point I knew like, I just wanted to play basketball and I didn't want, I like, sure. I wasn't going to be a doctor or a lawyer or some sort of business tycoon. I'm just going to play basketball. What does somebody with a life sciences communications major do when they need that major? What do you what are you gonna do when you're done with basketball? I remember specifically there being a lot about genetically modified like foods, stuff like that. <laughs> like literal like literal life science, like science to keep like life moving forward. I don't know, like <laughs> genetically modified cows and things like that. I don't <laughs> to be honest with you, like it's I had a teammate that was a year or two years older than me then goes this this major is like the course like the requirements to get a degree in this major are not there's different routes you can go within it that like people become like doctors they work in like uh mm -hmm. the labs on campus and labs and other places on like corn and and dairy and like livestock and all of that stuff but for me it was i wrote some papers did a couple <laughs> internships good <laughs> Yep. State oh, bird wow. of Wisconsin's the American Robin. What else do you need to know, really? Exactly. And I did I did do all of like I know there's some things around campus like guys don't do their own homework and they don't do the like I sat there and I almost failed calculus on my own terms. Okay. I didn't, like, <laughs> like I was I called myself, what do they call it? The when you get the bad grades and they set the bar based on like how well you did. The they curve? Give you the, you know, the curve. I was a curve setter in calculus. <laughs> That's what I was. So, which would you rather work on? A, a, figure out a derivative, or or figure out like a goldfinch, as opposed to a, you know a wren of some sort. Option C. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Just moving on. <laughs> Funny. All right, we really should probably take a break for real now this time. Uh, we, we're going to have a lot more to talk about with Frank Kaminsky. When we come back, we are the Inside Wisconsin Show with Frank Kaminsky. The Inside Wisconsin Show is brought to you by American Family Insurance, Aaron's Company, Lane's Farm and Fleet, Capital Credit Union, Festival Foods, Quick Trip, Miller Lite, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, Provea Health, and the University of Wisconsin Platteville. Hey, remember to subscribe on YouTube, leave a review, smash the like button, just get with us. JA June is a huge month here in Wisconsin. Listen to this yep. Festival Foods is having their first ever Bacon Fest. Bacon Fest. Bacon's on sale at Festival Foods starting June 14th. Mm, Listen to this, dude. Bacon. bacon. <laughs> Bacon-related items throughout the store, like bacon-flavored vodka or a bacon donut. Are you kidding me? Bacon Fest, June 14th. It starts at Festival Foods, 40 locations across the state of Wisconsin. We'll have bacon on sale, Bacon Fest. All right, so my question to you now yeah. with the bacon here is we've talked about the, the eggs and the other things for breakfast. What is your favorite thing to put bacon on? That's not breakfast related. Is it a burger? Like, what do you got? Uh, well, first, let me just tell you about this, because I was just at a track meet, and I saw my boy Josh Awatunde, who was the bronze medalist of the World Championships, giant shot putter. 
And he came out of a place we were in Eugene at Nationals. And he, he had a box uh, from Voodoo Donuts in Eugene. And they were maple glazed donuts, right? So that's kind of a look like a long john. And they all had uh, a piece of bacon on the top. Yeah. But uh, if I'm going to do that, I am going to I'm going to bacon wrap my fillet. Oh, that yeah, would be my wrap. use of bacon right there. Mm-hmm. Gosh, there's so many things that you can do with so, bacon. So many, honest, dude. I just took a red eye back from Los Angeles. Do you know what I had with me? I had um um uh, a cured like jerky of bacon. I had a maple pepper and I had I had a Jeez. barbecue. And so yeah, I don't well, God knows what time it is, but before I shut her down on the flight, I'm just mowing bacon next to me. So there's this listen. There's there's nothing much like nothing in the world uh, cannot be improved by putting um, uh, cheese on it. Bacon is very much the same way. Very. Yeah. Like bacon wraps one jalapeno thing, bites. That's the old thing that we used to play. Name something that would not be improved if you put cheese on it. Name something that would not be improved if you put bacon on it. No, there isn't right? anything. Vanilla ice cream? No. <laughs> right. <laughs> Pick one. No, I nothing. want vanilla ice cream with bacon. That's what I'm having tonight. Great. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Check out Festival Foods starting June 14th. It's Bacon Fest. Seriously, my mouth is literally watering now for vanilla ice cream and bacon. (laughs) Sweet and salty. Let's go. We are back in between segments with Frank the Tank Kaminsky. Time for quite possibly the best top five list we've ever done. We'll get there in a second. Of course, the top five list on the Inside Wisconsin show is presented by Wisconsin's best engineering school, the University of wisconsin Platteville. UW Platteville offers an affordable engineering program and its graduates stay in Wisconsin, driving innovation at top companies right here at home. Find out more at uwplat.edu slash engineering. J.A., this is the best top five idea you have ever had. By uh, yeah, far. Yeah, you're really psyched. I don't know why that is. is it you just have a lot of pent-up anger and frustration you want to get out? Well, it, so we are we are on the positive train, right? Positivity, right. unity, positive. community, joy. This right. is the first time Bears we're going to talk about things that we don't like. <laughs> right. So we had we had talked in, in in texting Frank, and I had said, "Listen, just so you know, obviously trying to curry favor." I said, "Listen, um, I will never be able to fully embrace or forgive Grayson Allen for what happened in the Duke championship game." And so I just said to you, "What if we just had like the top five villains or the top five most hated opponents?" It, <laughs> Wisconsin people, and and you seem to think that maybe that could be a half hour special on Struck HBO, a, or a Netflix, a Netflix special. Struck, well, the, there, did you get are... a book full of them, or do you just oh, have yeah. to write I, it down? <laughs> this is my notebook, and I have a, a list. Page? Yeah, oh, it's a page. All right, <laughs> all right. You so we talked this through. I'm going to attempt to talk about the top five people, maybe in like the the younger years, right? And you well, went a little bit older. Is this true? Yeah, I don't know. I, I just I just don't know that they'll be the same. So we'll leave it at that. You Probably know? not. And listen, I went far and wide because I'm thinking things that are, you know, the people. And I thought, well, like Velveeta because it's the anti-cheese. And I thought, you know, like Urban Meyer should probably be on the list, but he's not an athlete. So he's not, you know, he's not there. Like you could do, you could do Eli Manning, right? He's He feels like he should have a lot of, you know, anger against him. Uh, if I was going to go way back, right, like Willie McGee, he pretty much ruined the World Series in 82 mm-hmm. against the Brewers. Rookie year that time, hit a couple of home runs in Milwaukee in a big win, so he could be on the list. Uh, like, how do you pick a Cowboy yeah. from their run when they frustrated the Packers and Holmgren far for so long, right? There's one of my honorable Aikman. mentions, Troy Aikman and Emmett Smith. And, well, but then you're missing out the guy that Michael Irvin is the guy who everybody really is probably dislikes the most. That's true. Yeah. By the way, as opponents go, can Brett Favre be on the list? No, I did think about that, but absolutely not. Okay. No. So at least you gave it thought. That's all I'm saying. I, I gave did just for a second. Too. That was so weird though. Like I, no it way. Entered my mind. Yeah, I'm in too. That was weird. I don't like that. All right. So as always, I have a top five with six. <laughs> sure. Five <laughs> A and five B. This is normal. Well, this time it's three A and three B. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So number five is Grayson Allen. Uh huh. All right. He's got to be. Uh, number four, still with basketball, is just name anybody on the Celtics 
uh, from the Bird Parish, McHale, Ainge, Dennis Johnson that ruined so many great Bucks seasons. Yeah. So many times. They were so good. Win the division, 50, 55 games. Marcus Johnson, Sidney Moncrief, Terry Cummings, really good teams and couldn't get out of the East because of those teams. <clears throat> so pick one off those teams. That's more me than I know that like that's sort of the cowboy equivalent. And I just I just figure of my age, Trev, more people are damaged by that. Yeah. Number three is where we have the tie. You got John Elway for screwing up the Super Bowl mm -hmm. and being famous because he helicoptered around. Big deal. Uh, and then the other one is Kirk Cousins, both for being a Viking and for the crap he pulled at Michigan State with the touchdown pass that I still don't think the guy was over the line to beat the Badgers and Russell Wilson and those guys. So Elway and Cousins are at number three. Got it. I can't Got separate it. them. My animosity is such that I cannot separate them. Uh, number two, very UWGB, is Steve Smith. For sinking the basketball, Michigan State mm -hmm. sinking the bucket that sent UWGB home when they looked like they were going to beat him, go to the Sweet 16. And legend has it, uh, he, he shoots the jumper and it's going in. But before it goes in, he turns around and looks at the, at the Phoenix bench and asks them how they're spending the rest of their spring break. No way. Yeah, it's fantastic, right? How's that? Wow. It's yeah. Tiger Woods asking. What are you guys wow. doing for the rest of spring break? So Steve Smith's number two <laughs> on my list. And number one, um, and I'm kind of torn because I'm like, I'm not sure why you bother to hate this guy. He threw enough interceptions to make everybody happy. But Jay Cutler is number oh, one yeah. of hated opponents. Jay Cutler. Yeah. The villain. And, and like I said, and, and Charles Woodson always said, like, don't be mad. Like, just wait long enough. Jay will throw one to us. And he used to throw one to him all the time. Oh, and I have this last caveat because I've got the Madison shirt on and we're talking to Frank. And years ago, uh, when I first started at Missouri and had a reputation for a pretty good party school, right? Ranked really high. Yeah. And Playboy came out with their ranking of party schools. And Wisconsin's nowhere to be found. And it says, this is a college list. We're not ranking the professionals. <laughs> that is so, so true. Yes, yeah, so in that spirit, that's why Randy Moss isn't on my list because Randy Moss is above and beyond all of these people and has his own rarefied air of people at Wisconsin who dislike him. So I don't yeah. know that he can be on my regular list. Yeah, that's right? that's so fair. That totally makes five, sense. And then here's Randy over here all by himself. Yeah. And, and, and everybody's just ball of hate for him. Mooned Lambeau Field. Like that, you're, you're not going to get away with that, dude. What are you doing? Yeah. I mean, he listen, told... they won, and it was a bold statement, but it puts him forever as a marked man. My turn. I'm Jack for yeah. this. All right. Okay, Who, here we go. Way, in that top five, how did I name? Like 12 people, something like 14? <laughs> well, okay, so there's a couple honorable mentions. I wrote, you this is not my top five yet. Just hear, hear me out on this. We didn't hate er, – like, Erlacher isn't a villain per se, but, man, he was a nemesis. Like, he was a – it was – Nemesis, yep. Okay. Nemesis, yeah. Okay, so also, do you remember Chris Hovan? I do. Yeah, linebacker or defensive lineman for the Vikings. He caused far of a ton of trouble. Ton yeah. of trouble. I like feel like early two thousand. Like Warren Sapp's coming with where you're headed, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. okay, number five is anybody that says the in front of Ohio State. I hate <laughs> that. Well, that's not a, a player. That's just – now that's yeah, a well, fan base. Okay, fine. So be it. Then okay. all of them are on my list. All right. Here are the actual people. Number four – We are number five. Ugh. Number four, Mateen Cleaves. Another – we have some Sparties on the list. Steve Smith. Michigan State. They and beat Wisconsin 2000 yeah. Final Four, and he went off. Not a fan of him. In one number of the three. worst basketball games ever. Yeah. So that, that game, what was it, like 40 to 20? It set basketball back 100 years. God bless Dick Bennett, who's <laughs> friend of the program, but that game was almost unwatchable. It was a very Wisconsin basketball game. That, yeah. like, that was very Wisconsin. Uh, all right, four. That was number four. Number three, Warren Sapp. Warren Sapp, like, <laughs> literally tried to kill Chad Clifton. It yeah. was the worst football play I've ever seen. It Did it not end Clifton's career? He broke his hip or something? Pretty close, oh. yeah. 
Warren Sapp was playing for Tampa Bay, right? Then That's... he danced. Yeah, then he danced. And Mike oh. Sherman tried to Mike Sherman tried to box him, box his ears in right there in the 30. Oh, terrible. Number two, Manny Machado. He was playing for the Dodgers when the Dodgers and the Brewers were in the NLCS and he kicked Jesus Aguilar. Remember that? Oh, wow. I believe in Jesus. I, it's too bad. I kind of like Manny. Mm, tough. He remember, I, remember, was, I, remember I, sh- I showed him around. I got him his, I got him his, his, oh, yeah. his desk at ESPN at the hot yeah, corner. Yeah. Tough. Don't kick Jesus Aguilar. That was Bush League. And okay. He did it on purpose. I believe in Number Jesus. one, it's not even close for me, Ndamukong Sue. Like, stepped on Aaron Rodgers and kicked TJ Lang in the nuts. Did he not? So, basically, anybody that tried to injure one of our players, you are against. That's not great. Kind of frowned upon. He was the worst. He's okay. still playing? Is he still playing? Yeah, he I think he is. He around yeah. for a minute. I forget where he oh, was. that's a fun last. list. He was, he, right, he was, with, uh, he was with the Rams for a while, and I think he took off there. But, yeah, I think he's still bouncing around somewhere. I think he won a Super Bowl with Tampa Bay when, when – uh, Tom Brady was there, fairly certain. So Good for I him. He's not happy there. about it. I guarantee you, JA, people are going to watch this and go, oh, you missed him or you missed that sure. person or you missed like. So this is going to be fun. Please comment below with who we missed that should have been on a list of top five Wisconsin villains. I'm surprised Randy Moss is nowhere to be seen on your list, even on well, he was mention. you. Well, it, I, he was, but you just said he was like the king. So, I mean, how do you not? So he freed up a space for somebody else on yours. I moved the, the, all, the all of the Ohio State, State fans in there. Yeah, that's exactly mm-hmm. right. Oh, yeah. brutal. Oh, man, that was. So I'll tell you this. Uh, there's a great comedian. His name is Greg Warren. He used to be a wrestler at Mizzou. He does a great bit. And he goes, you can't go into, you go into anybody, any, again, this is not my material. And he goes, you go into any bar in Ohio, right? And you go, oh, H. And the other guys go, I-O. He goes, since when does it take two freaking people to spell that word? <laughs> not that hard. And yet it takes, you know, hey, how do you spell your how do you spell your state's name? He goes, well, usually I work with a partner. I don't know if I can get this on my own. <laughs> so, yeah, there you oh, go. O H I O. Not the takes two people. There you go. Frank, save us. We are back. The Inside Wisconsin Show with Frank Kaminsky, Trevor, John. That's Frank in the middle. Yeah. All right, Frank, I don't try to dig up dirt, but I do look for stories when we're having people on. And so I texted a couple people like, hey, what do you, what's your best Frank story? Only one of them got back to me, though. I, I texted Bo Ryan. I texted Matt LePay and I texted Sam Decker and Bo responded. That's it. And here's what Bo said. Tell him I almost collapsed doing his workout routine. So you almost killed your coach. What is he talking yeah. about? I mean, summer times we had like. We, we had our root car routines, but I think I know specific. I think he's joking more um, than anything because he texted me that uh, during COVID, I made a Twitter video of me doing like a workout in my backyard because I was so bored of like all this stuff of like all the workouts I was doing. And it ended with me um, like Stone Cold Steve Austin, a couple <laughs> beers um, in my hot tub and then going and jumping in my pool. It was just literally like my daily routine. I would like wake up, lift in my backyard, do a little bit of boxing for like cardio and stuff because I was I had an injured knee at the time and I wasn't trying to run or anything like that. I'd do the pool and hot tub. And that was pretty much it. But yeah, that's probably what he's. I think I believe that's what he's referencing. Okay, good. I thought. But I do. Cool. But I do in college. I did have a pretty intense workout routine. Hmm. Did it? But he didn't. He didn't. He, he didn't do. It. He wasn't. I was gonna say. I don't think he did. He wasn't doing that one. Yeah. Okay. Did it, did that include include beers in a hot tub? Uh, beers, but not a hot tub. Okay. okay. Listen, man, couple, man, just just like one or two. The man's got to hydrate. Uh, so we listen. We have this wonderful, remarkable career. Uh, I always think too, it shows the value of having really good senior players and guys that grow together, as opposed to these kind of one and done. You try to put five new guys together every year. I think that was part of the reason those teams were so good is that they had, they knew how to play uh, Mm -hmm. basketball and they knew how to play together, which is hard for those guys. Uh, But then it gets heady after that, right? You got to go to the draft and they give you a new suit and the whole thing. And then Michael Jordan's your boss. Like that seems like that was a, that is a bit of a whirlwind as well. If you can walk us through that. Uh, Yeah, definitely is. Um, 
you know, it all happened so fast after the season ended. Like you're so focused on trying to win a national championship. And then what they don't tell you is that like when you go further in the tournament, like it's less time to prepare for like the draft and the workouts and the combine and everything. So like my agency that I signed with at the time, like basically came to campus and we're like, you know, it's, it's like, you got to go, like, you got to get out to California and start training. So didn't feel like I really got proper time to say goodbye to like campus. It was just like the season ended and I was just like gone. But, um, you know, you, that's the thing, you know, I was actually talking about this with someone like a couple days ago, like, cause I, I'm working out here in the summer in LA and there's like some pre-draft guys that work out with the trainer that I work out with. And it's just like, you move so quickly from like one thing to the next after you're done with your college season, like you don't have like time to just like sit down and like decompress. And that was definitely me. Like, you know, I went from, you know, national champ, losing national championship game to like the wooden award ceremony to training to a week after that, like I'm going to different NBA teams and like doing workouts and then the draft lottery and then the draft combine, and then you get drafted. And two weeks after you're drafted, you're in summer league. And then, you know, they want you to come to the city and you got to figure out your life in that city. And then the, the next season starts. It's like you didn't really have time to like literally sit down and like decompress anything. You just go from one thing to the next thing to the next thing to the next. And that's why rookie years are always like tough and they're long and you like hit a wall. It's like because you've never had any time like away. But, you know, once you get into your well, later in your career, you get a routine down. Um, you learn to, you know, get away, spend a little bit of time away. But um you know, that's what I'd say. Like, it's a lot happening. Like once you're done with your college career, like it's a lot in a short amount of time. Like it really does happen fast. I feel like Charlotte was, was kind of on track, like things in Madison. We're starting here. We're building, we're building. And then it seems like they decide to blow the whole thing up. Kemba goes and the coach is gone. And like, I, I don't know how you see that. That's the outsider's view of that. And, but it, it, it seemed like, okay, we had this thing. And before it could be a real thing, we decided we're doing a new thing. Yeah. I mean, there was definitely an aspect of that. Like my, I think it was my third year, like we were playing really well and we had a really good, we had a good roster, um, you know, and then, you know, you get into the season and, and I think a part that like really kind of took us off track was our head coach ended up getting like sick. He ended up having like migraine problems and he ended up missing like, 20 something, 30 some games. Um, and he was really the one that like kind of brought everyone together. Like head coaches in the NBA are like extremely important. And it just felt like we got sidetracked and we got, kind of got off course and there was no one really to like bring everything back together. And then after that season, it was like, I don't know, they fired the whole staff. They fired the whole front office. Like all the people that brought the majority of us in, they were just gone. And, you know, when you do that, you know, especially you see it in today's NBA, once they get rid of the head coach, they get rid of the GM, they kind of just want to start fresh. They want to bring new people in, draft new guys. That's just the nature of the business. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm lucky in the sense that like, you know, that kind of pushed me to like try and leave there and get out of there and go somewhere else. And that's how I end up in Phoenix and a year and a half later, we're in the finals. So, um, you know, sometimes it's, sometimes tough situations like can push you forward to something really, really good. And that's, I'm lucky like Charlotte, definitely, you know, I loved my time in Charlotte, you know, we had a great team, a lot of great players, but that definitely was the thing that got me to Phoenix and allowed me to play in an NBA finals and play, you know, a role in some really special teams. So then where are you now? Where do you see yourself right now? Where, you know, where are we at a, you know, where, where, what road, are we on at this point? Um, you know, I've had a couple of unfortunate injuries in the last couple of years. I've fractured my kneecap twice. So coming back from that twice was, you know, mentally a lot. And this second time it ended up requiring surgery. So it's like the first major like surgery I've ever had. Um, it was tough getting back, but you know, this past season I was lucky enough, you know, I played in Atlanta and Houston, you know, I'm a free agent again this off season, but, you know, this is, I was just talking to my agent about this the other day. Like, this is the first year, like in a couple of years where I felt like extremely healthy. Like I felt like me again, it, like I'm not rehabbing. I'm not, um, you know, dealing with injuries. I'm not, 
you know, there's not, there's no like goals and like baselines I need to hit for like the off season. Like they do all these analytics on like your numbers and your legs and your strength and your jumping and all this stuff. So it just feels like I can have a normal off season and get back to doing like what I do. And so I'm a free agent again this summer. And, you know, I've always said this, like, I want to be in a situation where like I can have some control over what's happening to me. Cause I feel like everywhere I've gone and every time I've somebody's ever put something in my hands, you know, that's when I'm the most comfortable and that's when I make the most of it. So um, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, I've, I'm eight years in 30 years old um, would like to play as long as I can. But at the end of the day, like I, if I feel like, this and I'm as healthy as I am, I'm always going to keep pushing for more. You imagine if you end up on a team with Grayson Allen, like that would be. Yeah. We are. Yeah, I mean, we. Well, well, I played. I played with Booker. I played with Booker for three years, and oh, we knocked his team out of the Final Four. And you know, he's a good. He's a great dude. We always had great times. Um, yeah. You no, know, he addressed it the first time when I signed in Phoenix and I went to summer league to go do my physicals. He addressed it immediately. He's like, you know, I'm still not over it, and I was like. I bet. <laughs> and that was and that was like kind of the end of it. Have you met his dad? I have. That's yeah. he's that's one of my buddies. Yeah. His dad's yeah. great. I'm I'm at the age where all the current players, whether pick a sport, mostly I just know their dads. <laughs> that's where I'm at. That's awesome. <laughs> that's, that's great. Yeah. Yep. So you talked about the celebration, you, you guys kind of missing that since you were still on the road. But you probably were able to take in a lot of other sports while you were at Wisconsin, right? Talk about going to a, a Badger football game and seeing jump around for the first time. Oh, uh, that was the first time I actually did it was on my official visit was when the football team um, beat number one Ohio State, returned the opening kickoff and everything. Yes. I think that was what, 2010, 2010. Um, I mean, and after that, I literally was like, I'm coming to every football game while I'm on campus. And I think. I honestly, I don't know if I missed one. I don't know if I missed a home game. Like, I, obviously, the games where they were, like, beating Bowling Green, like, 65 to 14. Like, we didn't stay the whole game, but we would stay for jump. I stayed for jump around every single time, and then we'd, we'd go. But, you know, football games were amazing. You know, the volleyball team was really good. They went to a Final Four while I was there. Um, used to go to a lot of volleyball games. Um, just, it was a great time for, like, sports on campus. Like, Russell Wilson and J.J. Watt was my – freshman year um had some really monty then monty ball came in and then melvin gordon like we had some really really good teams on campus that competed for a lot like it was it was a great time you know for for badger sports and hopefully like i'm not saying they've been like bad or anything by any standards but hopefully like can get back to that because obviously like you know the volleyball team's a national title contender every single year you know hockey's always good um Hopefully basketball and football can get back to like competing at that level. Well, women's hockey is really good. The men are struggling right, right now. Yep. What are you talking about? Watt? Are you talking about soccer? JJ Watt. He mentioned JJ Watt. I bought a Burnley Jersey and customized it with JJ Watt. That's kicking. That's kicking. It is kicking. I don't care. It's JJ Watt. All right. I'll, I'll tell you about here's I'm gonna give you my quick version of soccer so you have it right here, Trevor. We're gonna have it out in front of everybody. Here we go. It's the most popular sport in the world. Mm-hmm. I don't live in this, I don't live in the world. I live in the US. It's not that popular here. I move on. That's sure. that's all that's all I'm gonna say about when it when it comes kicking. to kicking. that right there. Yeah. Did you ever go to any swim meets or did that did your did your no. appreciation for that <laughs> that sport come did later not, in life? Did not uh did not go to any while I was in college. <laughs> I All honestly, right. I don't think I've ever been to a swim meet before. Still not. I don't think so. Okay. Well, you never know. There might be a USC alumni meet. Trevor, I don't yeah. even know that. Uh, so uh, that, that Frank obviously recently engaged to Ashley Brewer, uh, yeah. a co-worker of mine, a colleague at ESPN. But she swam at USC. She was a swimmer. Uh, there you go. I, Which, by uh, the way, thanks, for, thanks for connecting that because I thought that was pretty random. So appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> didn't, know, didn't know what the hell Mary was going do a, Mary do a college swimmer. There you go. Nice. Yeah, Mr. Deep Background. <laughs> yeah. it comes through. Got it. Where yeah, do I, I think need... some? Sw- I think some swim meets are in my future. Yeah. Well, I think so. Ho- yeah. Ho- well, hopefully not for a while. Yeah. Right. Like... <laughs> yeah, not for a while. I don't. Look... But she does. I'm pretty sure she does the alumni one every year. So. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Um, give me, give me the grind of the NBA. 
because you mentioned something about this is the business you've chosen, but when you're a kid, it's the game you choose. At what point did it became the business? What did it become the business you've chosen? And you're like, holy crap, back to back, that's a real thing. Um, and and this is this is different than the game I played in Madison. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I feel like most things kind of get different when money's involved. Like some decisions get clouded by money. When you're in college, nothing's clouded by money. It's and maybe maybe now I don't. I mean, maybe yeah, the landscape right. is now, but it's when I was in college, like n- none of that happened. So, um, you know, sometimes I felt this at certain points in my career where, you know, decisions to play or not to play were more financial than it was like fit with you know what our team was trying to do, and. You know, that's always been a frustrating part to me because I just love playing basketball. Like that's, that's simply it. Like, I don't, I don't think about the money. I don't chase like financial things. I just want to play And the NBA is the best league in the world. And I want to compete. I've always wanted this. I've always just wanted to compete against the best players. Like I want, I actively want to play like the best team and play on the big stages. Like that's, mm-hmm. that's like when you feel alive, especially for me, like as a little kid who grew up, grew up, like idolizing the Bulls and those Michael Jordan teams, you know, they were always in the finals and that's always what like, I like wanted, like I wanted to play for championships and, you know, it's always just been about winning for me. And, you know, the business side of things can get definitely frustrated because sometimes I'm not saying this is like as a whole, but it can muddy the waters. And, you know, that's just, that's that's the aspect where like sometimes it is a business but like in phoenix for our three years like it was straight it was straight about playing basketball and trying to win night in and night out and that's why i've always you know my time in phoenix was extremely special to me you know because we went in they were i think the worst or the second worst team in the nba the year before we got there um and you know monty williams came in and and brought in guys like me you know kind of to change things around and you know, we missed the playoffs by one game my first year there. And then the next year we're in the NBA finals. And then the year after that, we set the record for wins in a season in the franchise's history. So um, just there was always about, you know, just winning. And and that's what I'm, I've always been about. Like you go back to my high school days, like even in high school, like, you know, we turned our high school program around. We kind of, we brought Wisconsin to be like national championship, like title contenders. And then in the NBA, like you're playing for a franchise for a two year span, which was some would say was like the best team in the NBA, which is extremely cool because it's always just been about winning for me. And that's what I want to do. So first off two things. One, did you tell Booker it's not his fault because Calipari didn't play him enough, right? (laughs) He kept the, he he put his twins out there, put the Harrison twins out. Uh, Secondly. So before I came to ESPN, I was in Phoenix for three years. Um, and uh, I don't know if I told you this trip. I, I take the job, and as I'm driving out, I work in Oklahoma. I'm driving out there. They trade Barkley as I'm driving out there. So my first story is on here's Sam Cassell arriving and Mark Bryant and Robert Ory and I forget the fourth guy. All I know is they weren't Charles Barkley. Uh, but <laughs> try to tell people who because we're in Wisconsin. They love the Packers, and you know that's it's like Phoenix. For all the they have the they have the coyotes and they have the diamondbacks that like dude, you played in the Suns town, right? They are crazy. Yeah. That is the team in Phoenix. Like absolutely. They, yeah, they they are special. They're nuts. Like even the year we went to the finals was the COVID year. So like throughout the course of the season, like we didn't have a ton of fans in the arena. But as they started letting like more and more people in, by the time we were in the playoffs and everything, the arena was packed. And I, I haven't heard like obviously playing, you know, in those final four games and it's some like Wisconsin games, like it was loud, but like Phoenix people are crazy about their basketball. And that's what made it like awesome. Like ho- playing at home in the playoffs are just some of like the best memories I'll ever have. That's awesome. All right, let's take one more quick break. We'll be back to wrap it up with Frank Kaminsky in just a second. The Inside Wisconsin Show. The Inside Wisconsin Show is brought to you by American Family Insurance, Aaron's Company, Lane's Farm and Fleet, Capital Credit Union, Festival Foods, Quick Trip, Miller Lite, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, Provea Health, and the University of Wisconsin Platteville. Hey, remember to subscribe on YouTube, leave a review, smash the like button, just get with us. It is not by coincidence that yep. the brewer that is completely on fire right now, last name Miller in Milwaukee. That's 
This is normal things. I wonder oh, if he's a big Miller like guy. It's Miller this, time. It's Miller time. Owen Miller time. That's genius. Yeah. It's almost as good as Fear of the Deer. That's just that's that's just coming to you now. Yeah, just now. Yeah. I feel like All that's right. the very first thought anybody should have. Miller time. Of course it is with yeah. Owen Miller. Oh, by the way, raking for the Brewers. Comes on the Inside Wisconsin show, and everything changes for Mr. Owen Miller there at the Milwaukee Brewers. In fact, is, I, uh, think, I think they named the company after him. That's why that's how they got the name Miller. No they doubt. Named it after Owen Miller. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the one time it's not Miller Park anymore is what it is. It's clearly Owen Miller Park at the moment. It's he's still Miller Park when he's up, baby. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, it's summer, J.A. It is definitely Miller time. The beer that actually tastes like beer is even better in the summer. So mm-hmm. get your hands on a Miller Lite. It is indeed Miller time. Wherever you are outside with your friends here in Wisconsin, whatever you're doing, boating, pontooning, which is boating, uh, what else would you do in the summer? It's kind of like you just said something about bacon and how it's not – you can't – All I know is I, I look over your shoulder right now, and it's you're like a pirate with it's perched over your shoulder, on your over your right shoulder. That's yeah. the that's your left shoulder, oh, Trev. There you go. Got it. One of us works on TV every day, TV every day and the other guy's me. Anyway. Another reason know you us. couldn't be a weatherman because you yeah. <laughs> This Yeah, whatever. Uh, Miller time. That's where I'm going at. I love the outdoors in the summer. It was just Memorial Day weekend. We had a huge celebration here in De Pere and lots of Miller Lite was consumed. I'm a big fan. With a Miller Lite in your hand, summer does not just taste great. It tastes like Miller time. Mm -hmm. To get Miller Lite delivered right to your door, visit MillerLite.com slash Inside Wisconsin, or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories and 3.2 carbs. Per 12 ounces. Owen Miller time. In. Owen Miller time. Came up with that on your own, huh? Yep, homie. <laughs> We're back. Final segment with Frank Kaminsky here on the Inside Wisconsin Show. All right, Frank, two for me. Here's the first one. Frank the Tank. Did you go streaking to the quad? Or, I mean, like, what? Did you, how'd you get Frank the Tank? Let's hear the story. I mean, you know, I think you already know the answer. It's just like when the movie came out, you know, all my – Stupid buddies from back home just started calling me Frank the Tank. It just kind of that, stuck. That's insane. So it is actually. Like, I never literally. actually went out and told anyone that my nickname is Frank the Tank. Like, <laughs> everyone always just gave it to me. They're just like, Frank, <laughs> Frank the Tank, Will Ferrell movie. He's a big goofball. Like, it just makes sense. Perfect. Yeah. It fits. Uh, one more question. It dawned on me that you grew up a huge Bulls fan right? And idolizing Michael Jordan. And then you get drafted to Jordan's team. What was that like? That was really cool. Um, Yeah. Like, so my aunt and uncle both worked for the Bulls when I was growing up. So we used to go to the practice facility. I used to like try to have my birthday party at their practice facility every (laughs) single year. Like I used to want to go there so I could like run into players. My aunt used to like get me shoes that they didn't want anymore for like my basketball shoes every single year. It was like, it was really cool experience. And then obviously, you know, like in high school, me and my friends, like, I'd text my aunt. She'd be like, I'd be like, hey, can I get a couple tickets to the game tonight? we just drive down and go to Bulls games and, like, sit in the 300 level and just scream stupid things. <laughs> like, I grew up around it, you know, obviously in Chicago. Like, when, when you were a 90s baby in Chicago, like, your first memories are the Bulls. Yeah. And then getting drafted by Jordan was just – it was extremely cool because it's like – I used to have – my room used to be filled with, like, posters of you. I used to – try to get your basketball shoes like every single year like it was really cool and then I was lucky like I got signed to Jordan brand and like had all the Jordans it was like a it was like a little kid's dream come true that's cool decent guy I, like did you enjoy it like because sometimes yeah, yeah. you don't meet your heroes that kind of thing how yeah. was it yeah yeah he was great mm-hmm. um you know he he definitely knew that like I grew up idolizing him so like I always had good conversations with him he always it was great. To, like, always great to me, always great to my family. Just everybody would, would say hello to everyone when he was there. Just just awesome. Like, some owners, I'd say as far as, like, other owners I've had, he's a little bit more hands-off now than he was in the beginning. But mm-hmm. um, definitely a guy that, like, wants to compete. And that's that's the thing, too. It's like he's very competitive, he's, even, like, as an owner. Like, he wants to be in the playoffs every single year, which mm-hmm. I can appreciate. This is the only non-Wisconsin thing in my entire studio down here. Pippen, Jordan. Well, guess what? Dennis that's Rodman. A, that's a fractured fairy tale right now. 
I'm not sure yeah. those three. I'm not sure those three are all hanging out, buddy, buddy, right yeah. now. Yeah, that's a much. Don't think so. But no. like, I can, I can somewhat appreciate that because when they were together, and it was about the, it was about like winning. Right. That's three competitive guys when they were playing. I don't, I don't know about now, but yeah. So you, but you were, make no mistake, you were a Jordan guy. You didn't at some point go, look, I'm super tall. Luke Longley is the horse I'm riding here on my team. <laughs> <laughs> no. Luke Longley. You didn't go around no. with a fake Australian accent just telling people, look how tall I am. I'm Luke Longley. No, no, All I right. did not. That's amazing. But, but, you can understand that you might have that happen. Everyone's. I did. I did identify with Brad Miller at one point, though, when he was on the Bulls. <laughs> I can just hear Ray Clay, the man in the middle. I get that you yeah. always want to be Jordan, but I will be Will Purdue. Damn it! Who's going to fight me for it? <laughs> Nobody. These things happen. Listen, I'm left-handed, so when I was a kid, I used to fake like I was Kenny Stabler. He's the only left-handed quarterback. So you know, and maybe yeah. then the Packers didn't have a quarterback. All right. Uh, so now here's the speed round. These are going quick. Uh, so you're seven one. Trev is six eight. How tall am I? Six one. Six two and a half. Don't cheat me on the half. Okay, <laughs> close. Uh, I've wondered this from day one. When you were in school, who cut Sam Decker's hair? A blind person. Right. Looked like the guy had a floby. It was terrible. Uh, give me the Badger teammate that you'd take with you to to Vegas because it'd be fun to gamble with him. Uh, Jordan Smith. Walk on, my best friend in college. All right. Uh, what's this guy's, first... guy's smart. The guy knows he'll, he'll walk out of there with money somehow. What's the per diem in the NBA? I think it's like $155 a day. I think. Second question. How do you spend $155 a day in meal money? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it gets direct me... deposited in my account. I never actually see the cash anymore. <laughs> there you go. Uh, give me a Bo Ryan saying that just rattles around your head right now that you just wish you could get out of there. All I can all I can think about is he used to pronounce everything wrong. Everything. Used to say everybody's names wrong. Used to call like Washington, Washington. Like everything was wrong. <laughs> and he used to, and his thing he used to say was stick your face on it like loose balls. It's like, I don't care what you do. You just stick your face on it. So like you're supposed to dive after every and like sure. catch the ball with your face. It's like it's and it didn't make any sense, but no. he used to say st- he used to say stick your face on it. I had uh, I know one coach who made his team all wear the same socks, so that when they were diving down there, they would know if it was another teammate that they were they were having trouble with. Give me your all time favorite Chicago White Sox. Paul Konerko. Oh, there you go, Phoenix kid. Yep, Scottsdale. Yep, yep. good Phoenix kid. Uh. Uh, where were you guys registered? For what? For the wedding. What do you mean? Like our wedding registry? Yeah. Where were you registered? Yeah. Uh, Williams in Sonoma. Okay. And uh, Crate and Barrel, I think, are the two. Pretty standard stuff. Sure. I mean, uh, if, you want to give a, if you want to get us a blender, that'd be, we'd appreciate it a lot. So we're, like a real blender? You want one of those neutral bullets? What are you looking for? Like Vitamix. Yeah, some yeah, something fancy like that. Uh, who's the last person you beat in a game of horse? Some kid at a camp somewhere. I don't specifically remember. Okay, he was young. He couldn't. He, I mean, I had to. Can't let him win. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, was there was there is there polka going to be played at the wedding? No. Really? Yeah. You're no gonna polka. have. You might have Wisconsin people there. You're gonna need at least one polka. We are taking small requests, so if someone requests polka, like I'll let it ride. But chicken dance out of the out of the gates, just not a lot I'm of gonna, polka. I'm gonna send Ashley like an apple, peaches, pumpkin pie, just so she'll have it, just in case. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, yes or no? No. Thank you. That was quick. I'm a wow. Chicago bear. Like he doesn't own Chicago. That that no. All right. Uh, worst Big Ten visiting locker room? Minnesota. Hmm. Best visiting locker room in the NBA? Ooh, that's... Got to go with one of the newer arenas. Milwaukee's Twice. up there. Yeah, Milwaukee's up there. Sacramento is up there. Um, yeah, I'll say those two. Milwaukee, Sacramento. Uh, I forgot to follow up this. When you play horses, do you go two shots on E? 
Yes, always. Hmm. See, I, I I thought that was a local rule, and people would go like, "You're nuts." That's that's not how it goes. You don't yeah, play that way, two, Trev. Two. Uh, you two chances. Horses on the spelled with one. Why? I get it, yeah, but two, it. two shots on E. You got to prove it. Never done. You get that. a chance. All right. Do uh, it. Uh, finally, any pets? Yes. What dog. do you got? A dog. Golden, Retrie- Retrie- Golden Retriever. Yours or hers? Ours. Ours. Okay. I just didn't know if Ours. one if one came to the relationship with the dog. Well, she came to the relationship with him. But right. Yeah. He. If you if you saw us together, you would know who his favorite person is. Ah. Uh-huh. <laughs> now we know. Okay. There's no question whatsoever. Me and him. Me and him have bonded a lot. Okay. And that's Great when the dog. fight started. And that's when the fight started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's great. Good he, stuff, he's dude. A very loving dog. Loves us both. Listen, us thanks both for doing lot. this, man. This is been great. Uh, I do feel like we we might need to get a little something uh, in the walls down there. I feel like maybe you're just sort of uh, yeah. 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 What's going nice, on down nice there? Bedroom. Yeah. A lot of it's white nice walls. Bedroom. Like yeah. Hopefully that you feel like maybe you've been institutionalized. Well, when you uh, when you give a when you give a room to a male in a house and say this is like my room for my desk and my all my other stuff. This is what that said room will eventually end up looking like. All right. It's. I was going to say, at least get up some Jordan. The rest of the rest of our house, like upstairs or everything, looks great. There's stuff right, on the walls can... everywhere. Pictures of us. Great portraits. Some, some ocean stuff. You know, great mirrors. Great vibes down here. Get it's my world. Get the Jordan stuff out, or hang some of yeah. your jerseys, or hang Nigel Hayes's jersey. Give me something like that in there. You know. <laughs> I need to, you know, I do just a nice eight by 10 of Sam would look, would good look in there. would look good in there too. Don't you think? (laughs) Yeah. I got some pictures up here. Oh, I got this. What do we got? There you go. The, I got drawn a caricature and I wasn't too proud of it, but (laughs) am I allowed to ox this past year? I got that up there. If you grow into those feet, you'll have something. Exactly. Nice. So I got some, I got some I got I got some pictures up in here. So la- last thing, because I, I feel like this is kind of a Wisconsin basketball with Butch too. Uh, just give me give me uh, word association. Chicago Cubs. Fly that hell, the Cubs. You suck. It's not even a word. I'm not going to give you a word. That's all That's I'm going to love that. Listen, you love are that. right. You are right in line with the values of this program. I they are the worst. <laughs> I completely agree. Oh, oh that was that's awesome. That's a wrap. Not even a that's twenty. A we're just gonna we're gonna call stretch it out. That's it. We're done. We're taking out the starters. We're putting in the scrubs. Game's over. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, you guys. All right. Hey, st- yeah, and stay away from Neil and Bill Walton. That can okay. only lead to trouble. <laughs> I promise I will. Very good. Awesome. Thanks, brother. Okay. Stay we'll see you guys. Guys, please. I will. Cheers. I'll talk to you guys. Bye. Thanks. Yep. Bye bye. See you. Dude's funny, and he hates the Cubs like you and I. Do you hate the Cubs as much as I do? Oh, my gosh. The Cubs are pumped. Yeah. Okay. Good. Do you know what Cubs stands for, right? Uh, Completely useless once. by September. September, yep. Yep, yep. got to have that. Maybe that, yeah, mm. that doesn't, even if we've said it before, it bears repeating with that. And <laughs> Yeah, it just, you know. It's funny because I, I will say this. As diehard of a Brewer fan as I am, mm-hmm. and I go to Missouri the, the, the following year, right, the the, the – Cardinals beat the Brewers mm-hmm. in the World Series in 82. I graduate in 83. Then I end up down there. Had a roommate, great guy, Steve uh, Steve Hefner from McGee, Missouri. And he played the Cardinals constantly. And I actually got to where I really enjoyed them. As we said, uh, Owen Miller, like I'm, I am not somebody that hates the Cardinals, even though they beat, uh, the, they beat the Brewers. But between the Brewers and then the Cardinals, pff, the wrong end of I-55, man. Yeah, those guys – I will say, I will quote uh, Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth said this 100 years ago. Wrigley Field's a dump. He literally said, I'd give back half my salary if I could hit in this dump every day. That was 100 years ago. It's you can call it whatever you want. It's still a dump. It is a dump. Hey, by the way, Owen Miller comes on the Inside Wisconsin show, and he's just killing how is he, it. How is he not playing Ooh. every day? Seriously. He is now, isn't he? Yeah, pretty much, but still, we need him every day. Wow. Like otherwise, our best hitter's three fifty. He, he's hitting hundred points higher than anybody else in the lineup. 
Not and I don't know credit, if you're watching but... closely when he when he plays and he is in the highlight in Sports Center. It is always Fredonia's own. Is Howard it Miller? Oh, every oh. time. Oh, every it's time. Yeah. I wonder if he's seen that. That's great. I don't know, but every time I make sure I mention that he is not from Milwaukee. <laughs> That's that awesome. Uh, Maquan. Whitefish Bay or wherever he was, he was down again. <laughs> Maquan, no. Fredonia's own. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude's crushing it. Well, it was fun to talk to Frank Kaminsky, too. I mean, like, yep. uh, I, I just, I don't know, seven foot one, right? I, I feel bad for the guy walking around campus and, and being a, a megastar. Let's be real. So it was fascinating to kind of so hear. So much of that has to do with attitude, though, right? And and yeah. I like that he admitted for a while it, it kind of he had to find his place in that and then he realized his place was just being who he is you know yeah. and and that is you know sometimes the, the, the same thing that sometimes makes that a bit of a curse is also the same thing that makes it your gift and allows you to to do what you want to do if you uh, go to his twitter page i'll just put this out there uh on the top of his twitter page what is he fsk part three right yeah yeah at the top of his twitter page he's got a uh they call it a pinned tweet he talks a lot about kind of like his life beliefs and how he climbs mountains and mm-hmm. not everybody can climb a mountain, but it's everything that you just said is kind of relayed in that tweet. Go check it out. Uh, FSK part three. That's Frank Kaminsky. Thanks for having uh, the connection there, J.A. I stalked him down a little bit on Twitter. might have helped. Might maybe maybe hurt. I don't know, but it's good to have him. It helps. Ashley, Ashley Brewer, lovely lady. Lovely, yeah. lovely guy. So. All right. Back to the folk tale that is your childhood. What is up next on well, John this, Wisconsin? This is more young adulthood. Okay. Uh, but I thought since uh, Frank was here in Madison and he touched on some places, uh, I will tell you. So uh, I used to have one free weekend in the spring semester that we didn't have a track meet. We didn't have anything. We were done and we wouldn't have to go to conference. Yet. Sure. And so I used to always take that and my buddy and I, and we would drive to Madison to hang out with my buddies in Madison. Nowadays, right? You text, Hey, we're going to come see you this weekend. Back then you had to, you know, I sent a note, my friend Byron, who's often mentioned on this program and who, you know, now, and I sent him a letter and said, Byron, my boy and I, Roger, we're coming up to Madison. Here we go. Boom. And uh, he gets the letter um, that afternoon. He pulls out of his mailbox, and we show up like two hours later. <laughs> <laughs> there we are in Madison. Uh, so we hang out. My buddy from Missouri, who had never been there, he's like, wait a minute. They serve beer at the Union? Because in Missouri, it's a dry campus. You have a beer on campus. They'll pour it out in front of you make you feel terrible about yourself. Mm. So we go do that. It was great. We drive up to Ripon College where I have a very good friend who's staying there. We had no money. And we we're like, you either have to uh, give us some, uh, you have to buy us lunch or we're leaving. And they're like, oh, I don't have any money. But they found the money and we went. Uh, then we went and kind of surprised my mom at the bank because she had no idea I was coming. Um, you know, my Roger walks into the bank and says, uh, you know, asks about a car loan. He's wearing a Missouri shirt. And, and he says to my mom, uh, there she says to him, Missouri, do you go to Missouri? My son goes to Missouri. And he's like, oh, that guy over there. <laughs> so then I walk in the bank and she kind of uh, nearly collapsed because, quite frankly, she thinks I should be at college. So we make that, that trip the second year. This time we don't bother to tell Byron we're call- coming because what I mean, so- <laughs> We beat the letter by two hours. Who cares? So now we just show up, find out we can't stay at his place because uh, he has um, companionship that he is not willing to move out for us. Hmm. So we find another friend from Southwest. We stay there with her and her good friend. It was great. My thanks to Andy Wallenfang. But both these times we go hang out at the church key. Okay, bar. I don't know if the church key is still there. What a wonderful bar. It's I think it's in, it was in an old church and we're hanging out and there's always we're dancing and there's this video, big video screen. Right. So you can see yourselves and it's awesome. So the next year now. OK, we're not coming this weekend. We're just the next year, the next spring. Byron is at the church key hanging out and he looks and he sees me dancing on the screen. And he's like, he's got to be here. He doesn't tell me anymore. He just shows up. Turns out they were replaying last year's video from the church. Oh it was not there. Uh, it, but there was Roger and there were I and Byron. And then Byron sees himself. And then he looks down and realizes he's wearing something different. He's like, wait, I'm not wow. dressed the same. Why is that? Yeah. So that is uh, that was just we used to go. And just a small recollection of our annual trip up there. 
my freshman year, I didn't go with my friend Roger. I went with a, a different guy named John. Uh, 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 I'll think of it. I can see his sister too. Um, and whose parents had a, a grandparents had a dairy farm in Bonda Wells. So we went up to the World Dairy Expo. Uh, but yeah, every spring on that one weekend that I had free, we would go all the way up there and we'd go to Madison. We had a wonderful time, awesome. including showing up in the church key a year later, even when we were not there. These are Madison my is a good time. Period. Honestly, right? That might be the safest story anybody's ever heard about going to Madison yeah. for the weekend to drink <laughs> beer. <true. laughs> There's some more other ugly ones in there. John Shear, by the way, John Shear was his name, and his daughter, his daughter, his sister was Martha, who ran on our track team as well. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a very tame Madison story. I was going to say, I wasn't There's sure where that was that I could go, You know, those maybe in a different time we could get to those. We got more. We got more time. Yeah, Man, I love those. Those are fun stories. Jeepers, poor Byron. Guys, Poor Byron. I don't even know why he's. Yeah. Well, yeah, he, you pulled some things on this guy over the course of your. Are you kidding? This guy, never mind. <laughs> well, I still, we still have to. There was something about shifting the heavens that we're going to get you to tell us That's about. Someday we're going to get there. Yeah. By the way, yeah, we all yeah. just had our birthdays, right? So uh, Byron's yeah. birthday is the 11th of May. Mark Kalav is the 12th. Mine's the 13th. And so on the on the uh, 11th on Byron's birthday. Uh, Mark had to carry his books around because he was older. And then on the 12th, I had to carry Mark's books around because he was then older. And then on my birthday, I still had to carry my books around, too, because <laughs> I was just that age. But, you know, yeah. when it comes around, I always, you know, this this I texted Byron the other day. I'm like, hey, uh, how are we doing on the, you know, on the uh, age thing? He goes, I'm, I'm now older than you. I said, I'm spry. I feel like I'll go run a marathon. He's like, I'll bring my walker over and watch it. So, <laughs> Very, well, and it's a pecking order. I know that you are 18 years older than I am because you graduated high school the year I was born. So there we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll cover Good more stuff. of your life and the lives of those that join us here on the Inside Wisconsin Show. Our thanks to Frank Kaminsky. He was an absolute blast. Yep. We'll see you in two weeks as you were at Wisconsin. Remember to subscribe on YouTube, leave a review, smash the like button. Just get with us. The Inside Wisconsin Show is brought to you by American Family Insurance, Aaron's Company, Blaine's Farm and Fleet, Capital Credit Union, Festival Foods, Quick Trip, Miller Lite, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, Provea Health, and the University of Wisconsin Platteville. Sit down.